All right, guys, I'm Rabir. Dave. And in this video, we are looking at the Dark Glass Microtubes B7K Ultra Distortion Pedal. We are indeed. Essentially, Dark Glass are an awesome company from Finland, and they make amazing, amazing bass pedals and amplifiers. And this is the sort of hardcore version of the, the one that B7K. you have. B7K. Yeah. yeah. Which I'm, yeah, very familiar with. It's been on my board since it came out, really. Yeah, because um, they did the B3K, didn't they? And then the B7. Which is kind of like a, a smaller version of mm. It's kind of the same, I think it's the same kind of drive section. Right. Um, but the EQ is less extensive. I right, guess. okay. Um, so the Ultra being the most extensive in terms of its EQ, versatility, and tonal shaping functionality. Uh, Dave, what does this pedal do? So uh, essentially the layout and the controls are pretty much identical to the, um, to the vintage mm -hmm. uh, version. Um, so you've got basically an amp side, uh, which can be on or off with the bypass. Um, so the pedal's either engaged or not engaged. Mm -hmm. When it is engaged, then you're using the amp section, which is basically the bottom line of controls, uh, which is all the sort of EQ. On the other side, you've got a stump um, for a drive setting, and then that kind of lets you uh, control the top level of stuff where you've got a blend between the kind of clean amp mm. uh, EQ and the drive side, the amount of drive, and then you've got master outputs and, and that kind of stuff. Something that we've said previously, and that I'm going to say it again in case you haven't seen in the other videos, is Dark Glass's emphasis on mid range, mm. which is something both Dave and myself are really big fans of in our sound and generally when it comes to mixing and Get, stuff. Getting the mids right is, is very key. You want to make sure that it's blending mm. with the guitar as well as bass. The two need to work together to create a big, full, punchy sound with lots of definition as well. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, that's really important on bass and guitar. And this EQ is great for getting those mids right. Really. Yeah. So in terms of signal chain, uh, Dave's using his Ibanez. What is that? It's a five <laughs> it's string. The Ibanez five string. Yeah. That's that's it. It's got no, a really long code name. It, it does. I don't know what. I've never bothered to remember it. Okay. It's the Ibanez five string. It's very nice. Okay, that's great. And then that goes into the pedal, and you are hearing uh, direct out straight into the Universal Audio Apollo eight P interface. Yeah. Uh, and we're using uh, Logic to record it all. Probably worth pointing out just what's on the pedal. So in terms of the EQ range, you've got bass, low mid, high mid, and treble, which is wicked, because it's kind of like a channel strip on a desk that you yes. expect to see those things. But then we've got three, uh, we've got four toggle switches, all of which are three-way. So we can access the low mids in terms of frequency range. We've got, on the looks of here, on the close-up camera, we've got 250 hertz. Uh, with the switch down, then you've got 1k in the middle, and then you've got 500 hertz at the top, and then above that you have a, a toggle switch for attack. What were you saying about the? These yeah, so I, I think they kind of work a bit like a, a, a shelf EQ. Mm. Um, so uh, I think it's predetermined, so it's going to add a certain amount of decibels mm. up at a certain frequency. So like a high pass, down. low so, pass. Yeah. yeah, essentially, yeah. You've got a bit of a high push or a low push mm. or a low cut mm. um, or flat. Yeah, um, and that kind of just helps. In particular, it's quite powerful when you're using it with uh, the low and the high mid control because yeah. when you're cutting out a load of whatever frequency, mm. it might be taking a bit too much away. Right, and they kind of help to like bring back or compensate. If okay, you've, you know that kind of thing. Nice. Yeah, and then we've got the high mids, and then the same sort of thing on this side. So you you've got in terms of frequency range, you've got seven fifty hertz with the switch down in the middle, three k, and then you've got uh, one point five at the top, and then a grunt switch, which to be fair is wicked because that is where you get that punchy, dirty kind of bass filth Definitely. from. We'll we'll start on the ampy side, and I'll mess with the EQ whilst you play, and then we'll try the distortion. Cool. So this is the bass uh, and the pedal bypassed, and I'll let you. Take it away from there. Sick. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
You know, that could have been the intro to like a sitcom from the 90s. Yeah, well, you know, like Seinfeld. Like, yeah, I was going to say like a cop kind of action yeah. thing. I, yeah, I would mystery. have appreciated that. If I was watching that on TV, I'd have turned and gone, yeah, that's some it's, sick bass it's thing. The little... Yeah, 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 that was good. The pedal, I was just going to say before Dave then enlightened me with a little bit more bass chordal lure. Uh, <laughs> carnival. Was that you've essentially got a wicked range of EQ and it is really, really effective. It's super responsive and that's just wicked. And I think, to be fair, with bass, a lot of bass players from my experience live, you know, they tend to just kind of scoop the mid-range, loads of low, loads of high. Whereas this, as you can see, when I was messing around, the toggle switch is all super uh, responsive and yeah. it actually shapes the tone quite drastically. Yeah, having the flexibility to change which notch Mm. Um, you know what sort of frequency area you're actually boosting or cutting is is really cool. Yeah. Um, it's very it's essentially it's semi parametric EQ. Yeah. Um, Getting technical on it, Dave. We are. Right. So I'm going to twelve o'clock everything again, and let's just mess around with the distortion and see what we can get out of it. But I'm excited about this. So am I. Yeah. I'm excited mainly to see how well it handles super low. This is drop A. It is. So it's very low. That's why we're using it. As you've seen in the playthroughs Dave's done earlier on, he's using four string. Mm -hmm. So this is a good example of how low range you can go. Yeah. That's insane. <laughs> that sits that's a ridiculous amount of distortion. Mm. But but something that I really like and also it's really no low noise. Yeah, I mean to say that's that's a lot of gain. Yeah, it's the thing I love about this it's the tone is of the pedal is that it's not normally bass distortion they get the fizz wrong. They get like the top end wrong, yeah. like the the, the 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 treble whereas that it's it's kind, of, it's kind of like a guitar. I bet a guitar sounds good through that because it's the amount of like mid-range, high mid-range presence that you've got control over the, the yeah, shaping it's, it's of not, it. It's not fizzy. Yeah. Um, it's perfect to sit into a mix, is that? It is. It's very percussive to play as well. Yeah. I can um, see why you like it. Although I would say that it's quite exposing. Right. Um, so. If you make mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 You know, you've got to be quite accurate, I guess. Right. Well, the, there is one thing I want to try with it. And that's a bit of slap. So I reckon if you want to get a four string out, uh, we'll try the slap sound and see if we can get something wicked with that. Cool. Do you want to clap your hand and then the bass will be a four string? All right, three, two, one, go. Well, there you go. He's got a four string in his hand. Great. So uh, I've pretty much put everything back to 12, except for master, because this is a passive bass. It's a bit quieter. Uh, and then I, essentially I'm going to try and find a slap tone uh, whilst Dave plays. Cool. Let's do it.
<laughs> well, we didn't clip anything, but in fairness, uh, you know, I don't think this pedal is aimed at slap tones. No, not really. But to be fair to it, that's not a bad slap tone, if you ask me. No, no, not at all. Again, I think because the you know the EQ is so powerful, that you really can get pretty much any tone that you'd need. Mm. Uh, it's another one of those pedals that if you're looking to get into buying pedals and you don't currently have anything, mm. it's a really handy pedal to to get as a first pedal because it does give you that option of having you know with a clean amp, mm. uh, three different sounds, uh, and also that kind of recording facility for yeah. um, stage and also you know, uh, the studio and it's nice and small throughout in your rucksack. Yeah, and it looks like it's built to last and it's a lovely looking pedal. Dark glass makes some really nice looking gear. It's a straightforward pedal, got a ground lift as well, so you can get rid of some of that unwanted noise. Let's just tr listen to it with it off. I mean, it's it's minor and we've I've got... Try, try again. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's really, really minor. And again, it's the low noise pedal. That's with the distortion quite high. So fair play. Nice one, Dark Glass. This is good. This is good gear. It is. If you want this pedal, uh, there'll be a link in the description box below to take you to Anderton's, where it is £359. Alternatively, you can find it all over the internet, should you wish to buy it anywhere else. But yeah, I think that's wicked. I don't even think it needs checking out. Just, no, just buy it. Just get one. Yeah, Dave's Dave has spoken. The Dave has spoken. <laughs> uh, but yeah, nice one, guys. Comment below and uh, nice one. I'll see you soon. I've been Rabir. Dave.